more at itvradionigeria.com. Watch ITV via live streaming on the internet. itvradionigeria.com forward slash live and click on the TV stream option. Also remember to visit your mobile app store and download the ITV app so you can watch on the go. For advert placement and commercials, call the following numbers 0805 563 8573. 0803 775 5024 0708 365 2800 and 0708 365 2474. Independent television, certainly the best. Plantation, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh, my father is also a farmer. Oh, yeah. Yes. But he has a yam yam mission, a cassava cassavation, and a corn connection. Coconut, coconut, tissue. My dad, you go back for the truth. No, I go to church. I don't come for morning service. Papa, now maybe you carry so. No, now get your bread. Take chop. Good morning, my picking. You don't wake. No, not for dream. I did not for dream. I for the I for the I for the greet you. We now gonna ask like like question. Thank you very much for joining us on the program Healthy Living. What is the kidney. The kidney is an excretory organ in the body, which is for metabolism. Tuberculosis affects many organs in the body, but the common ones it usually affects is the lungs. Epilepsy is a neurological problem. Okay. It is an injury in the brain, which causes someone to begin to convulse, to go into fits. It is curable, but the cure is a long-term thing. If you eat well, and avoid those um, risk factors that will make your immunity to be down, then the risk of contacting um, tuberculosis will be reduced. If you're healthy, then you're wealthy. All right, thank you one more time. The program's still much alive here on independent television. I did tell you that uh, the role of civil rights activism and social participation is going to be a next uh, part of discussion as we get along on the program this morning on ITV. We are so privileged to have uh, leftist of Mobude Ago, who is the coordinator general of Edo Civil, uh, civil uh, Society Societies Organization. All right, uh, I beg your pardon for that. And also we have uh, uh, Mavis uh, Iyamu, who is uh, a member of African Youth Parliament and also uh, the former legal advisor to NADS. Uh, gentlemen, you're welcome to the program this morning on IT. You. You're welcome. Thank now, you. we're talking about uh, civil um, you know, activism, civil rights, and all that. Perhaps let's trace it from uh, independence. In 59 years, uh, what do you think has been uh, uh, the role so to far, I mean, so, so to say, in ensuring that Nigerians are really socialized in terms of uh, social activism? Let me start from Amit Okay. Okay. Um, in 59 years, yeah. If not for the role of the civil society, I think we won't be here, we won't be where we are now. Even though we are still crawling. Um, so, you, um, uh, so we are not seated, we are crawling this progress at all. Um, we've had great leaders who are coming over the years and contributing and demanding and for, for, for social um, um, justice. justice, for social all-inclusiveness of citizens and participation in the system. And it's been coming even though we've had we had a long time of military rule, you know, after the independent military took over, had a long time of military rule that trafficked 
all of that progress we've achieved, um, which is not actually even different now because somebody with some person that have said we are still military. Room. Yes, I totally agree. We are still actually military. Room. Jordan, military no, you room. can't. You can't say so. I'm not going to allow you to say so. We are not in military rule. Uh, this, this is this is democratically elected yes, government. A civilian rule. We are in democracy on paper. Mm. We have military men who are wearing Agbada and. Just the, all the justice just changed to that. No, but that's not true. Put military uniform and wear that. That's not true. We still have, we have a, a, a retired army general yeah. as president. In 1989, we had a retired army general who was the first president. The only time we had military, uh, civilian rule in between the uh, in, in between this time of democracy was when um, Yeradua came in. And the um, um, was also there. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we, we, we are still in, in Okay. Now, I'm uh, obviously, yeah, do you think that uh, social activism, uh, you know, has uh, so far in these 59 years has really uh, gotten us as a nation to where we ought to be? <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Evans. Uh, Arazo Copatriot. Nigeria's Nigeria Kolo Bay. <laughs> since independence, since, you know, 1st of October 1960, has been our daily declaration. Mm. Clearing call to nation building. But I can tell you critically without messing with that. We have been through difficult times, we have been through take a time moment, you know, hope and despair. With a bitter expression that oh the youth have been in the receiving end of that ugly pyramid. So, the other reason why I said I must tell you hmm. that since October 1st, 1960, the one that is within my, my knowledge and uh, my the brief history of uh, embodying by the Muslim of Baghdad's government, I can say to a very convincing level that the role of civil rights activists has been very enormous. But that's played this role of eye-opener mm. that has exposed our consciousness to national issues. Okay, like, we'll, we'll take a short pause right. now uh, because of the news update at 9.30 and uh, we're going to be right back on the other side of the time. Please stay tuned. The law, as beautiful as it is, can be very, very intricate. So you need a program that helps you unbundle legal issues. Don't get caught on the wrong side of the law. Let our array of articulate and experienced lawyers walk you through your rights. And well, responsibility. Watch Law and You on independent television. Know your rights and stay informed. Now you know. It is legal to watch Law and You here on Independent Television every Monday at 3.30 p.m. West African time with me, Uyi Agumofwegbe. Law and You, know your rights. Thank you for joining me on the news update on ITV. I am blessing H.E. President Muhammad Buhari says the administration will continue to invest in improving the social well-being of Nigerians. President Buhari gave the assurance in his independent speech to mark the country's 59th year of nationhood. Thomas Sadu has details.
President Mohamed Buhari recalled the sacrifice of the founding fathers of Nigeria and harped on the need for Nigerians to continue to be selfless in their service to the growth of their fatherland. President Buhari acknowledged the long sufferings of Nigerians in the face of the current economic and security challenges, but was, however, quick to say that with efforts of his administration, better days are here again. He said that he had directed the release of 600 billion naira for capital project implementation from the 2019 budget in the next three months. This administration is committed to responsibly managing our oil wealth endowments. We will continue to prudently save our oil income and invest more in the non-oil job creating sectors. In this regard, we are significantly increasing investment in critical infrastructure. Last year, capital releases only commenced with the approval of the budget in June 2018. However, as at 20th June this year, up to 1.74 trillion naira has been released for capital projects in the 2018 fiscal year. Implementation of the 2019 capital budget, which was only approved in June 2019, will be accelerated to ensure that critical priority projects are completed or substantially addressed. The Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning has been directed to release 600 billion naira for capital expenditure in the next three months. To maximize impact, we shall continue to increasingly welcome and encourage private capital for infrastructural development through public private partnership. Speaking on the special intervention program, which is under the supervision of the office of the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, the president stated that the 500 billion naira special intervention program continues to target vulnerable groups through the homegrown school feeding program, government economic empowerment program, empower job creation program, loans for traders and artisans, conditional cash transfers to the poorest families and social housing scheme. He also said the newly set up economic advisory council would advise him on inclusive and sustainable macroeconomic, fiscal and monetary policies. On improved electricity supply, President Mohamed Buhari said through the presidential power initiative, his administration signed an agreement with the leading German electricity provider Siemens and expressed confidence that uninterrupted power supply will be a thing of history in the not too distant future. I am pleased with the improved interagency collaboration between the Ministry of Power and the regulators in the banking and power sectors to ensure that electricity sales, billings and collections are automated and become cashless. These initiatives are important to ensure that the technical and collection losses in the sector are substantially reduced. I remain confident that Nigerians will have affordable and uninterrupted electricity supply in the not too distant future. The president noted that for change to happen, all Nigerians must support him and think like him to get the country from the old ways of doing things and wish them fruitful years ahead. Thomas Sado reporting. The federal government yesterday celebrated the nation's 59th independence anniversary at the presidential villa Abuja. There was also a presidential change of guard from 177 Guard Battalion of the Guard Brigade. ITV Abuja State House correspondent Ikarata has details. One by one, some prominent Nigerians walked through the ceremonial gate into the forecourt of the presidential villa. As traditional, Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo, upon arrival, mounted the podium and an abridged national anthem was rendered for him. Some minutes after President Muhammadu Buhari arrived, he was ushered in by the Piper's Band of the Guards Brigade. <laughs> The soldiers thereafter commenced the military procedure for the exchange of guards as men of the 177 Battalion of the Guards Brigade were withdrawn and replaced by soldiers of the 7th Battalion. 
the exercise witness color party display, silent drill, exchange of flags, and firing of 21 gun salutes, amongst others. After the exchange of guards, President Muhammadu Buhari signed the Independence Day Register, released white pigeons to symbolize freedom, and later led other key government officials to the cutting of the Independence Day anniversary cake. <laughs> National Assembly leaders, ministers, and other prominent Nigerians at the event believe that Nigeria has more to celebrate at 59. Nigeria at 59 has achieved a lot, but we also have uh, some challenges. And this is the way nations uh, evolve normally. Uh, while we have achieved so much, we have challenges that we can surmount. Every year of existence is worth celebrating. Uh, um, Nigeria is 59 years today. Other countries are uh, not as old as 59. They're celebrating. Other countries are 200 years and they're celebrating. Every year is worth celebrating and we've come a long way. I think 59 years, we still have a long way to go. We're on the right track. And like I said, we have a transformational leadership. For mothers of the nation, Ours is prayers for Nigeria. Ours is prayers for Mr. President. Ours is prayers for all those in position of authority. The main fact that as a developing nation, we are able to stay together despite our diversities after 59 years is commendable. The appeal to Nigerians to join hands with government at all levels to move the country forward. For guests and some government officials who spoke to journalists 59 years after the exit of the colonial master is worth celebrating. But with the poverty and unemployment rate still on the high side across the country, many believe that those in authority should do more to address the plight of the citizens in order to make future October 1st worth the while. From the forecourt, Asorok Presidential Villa, Amikaro Atta, ITV News, Abuja. Very similar Benin Sir Chief Dr. Gabriel Usawao Ibnidian has felicitated with Nigerians in the occasion of Nigeria's 59th independence anniversary. In a message, the ASMR Benin said, Nigeria's 59th independence anniversary is worth celebrating because of the unity of the country, which makes the country the envy of many nations of the world. Sir Chief Dr. Gabriel Usawao Ibnidian commended Nigerians for their resilience and hard work and ensuring the unity of the country despite the challenges confronting the country. He urged Nigerians to be optimistic and not to despair. The ASM of Benin expressed gratitude to God for the abundant blessings, both human and natural resources, which has made the country the giant of Africa, respected by countries around the world. Sir Chief Dr. Gabriel Usawawi Benadian said as Nigerians celebrate the resilience and creativity of citizens in various fields, there is need for continuous prayers for the unity of the country despite the challenges. As Nigerians celebrate Commemorate 59 years of independence, William Ziyama of the News and Current Affairs Department in the special news commentary chronicles the vision of the nation's founding fathers who fought for the freedom of the country from the grip of a colonial master, Britain. First of October 1960 has become a watershed in Nigeria's political history. It was on that historic day that Nigeria gained independence from her colonial master, Britain. It is not out of place to state that the independence was got on the platter of gold as Nigeria did not go through the rough rides like Kenya, Zimbabwe and Tanzania that engaged their colonial masters in guerrilla warfare. 
During the colonial era, Nigerians who acquired Western education became politically conscious. Educated Nigerians who were conscious of the evils and disadvantages of colonial rule started agitating for the political emancipation of Nigeria. The likes of late Dr. Nnamdi Azikiwe, a political ideologue and an alumnus of Lincoln University, USA, led the charge for the decolonization of Nigeria. Chief Anthony Enauro of Blessed Memory moved the motion for Nigeria's independence. Others who also spearheaded the agitation for independence were the late political sage and premier of the defunct Western region, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, first Prime Minister of Nigeria, late Sabu Katafa Balewa, late Tuwanfo Orezu, one testing president, and the late Sir Ahmad Belo, premier of the defunct Northern Nigeria. The independence of Nigeria on 1st October 1960 witnessed the lowering of the Union Jack, the British flag, and the hosting of Nigeria's flag, signaling the sovereignty and nationhood of the country. Upon the attainment of nationhood and political sovereignty in 1960, the departing British colonialists, who were amenable to the Northern people's political domination of Nigeria, helped lead Sir Abubakatwa Balewa to become the Prime Minister in 1960. At independence, Nigeria was regarded as the beacon of hope to other Africa countries. It was no surprise that abundant human and natural resources made Nigeria to be regarded as a giant of Africa. The country has gone through the colonial experience, experimented with parliamentary and presidential democracy, and survivor of a 30-month civil war. In the post-independence era, Nigeria's economy was the first to reckon with as those in charge of hem of affairs ran an open, honest, transparent, and patriotic government. Corruption, nepotism, favoritism, embezzlement, and money laundry were non-existent in the post-independence era. Nigeria's problems got out of hand on 15th of January and 29th of July 1966 through coup and counter coup. It became near impossible to put the country back on track. Today, Nigeria is stuck in the mud of underdevelopment because it has not been led by its best politicians since it became a politically independent country. However, Nigeria can get its acts together again by returning to the principles of honesty, hard work, selflessness, and patriotism. The country is blessed with an infinite endowment of natural and huge productive human resources where it can be turned into an advantage. On the whole, a good leader could turn the country around in a record time and reignite the hope and optimism which ushered in Nigeria's independence 59 years ago. This special news commentary which chronicled the vision of the nation's founding fathers as Nigeria's commemorate 59 years of independence was put together by William Ziyama of the News and Current Affairs Department. And that wraps up the news update on ITV. Thank you for watching. I am Blessing AG. See you at noon for the World News. Good morning. Independent television, certainly the best. Uh, the program is still this morning on ITV on independent television and uh, we still have Comrade Omobude, leftist Omobude are here from Edo Civil Society Organizations and they also uh, uh, Comrade uh, Mavis Iyamu still on the program this morning on ITV. Gentlemen, you're welcome one more time. Thank now, uh, Comrade Iyamu, you were like trying to uh, talk about, uh, about social activism right from independence. Yeah, oh, it has been it has helped to after chip in the, the narratives of uh, Nigeria issues. Yeah. You know, it, it acted as a voice for the voiceless. A voice that once engaged the government on issues that bothers on the objectivities of the people. So in, 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 those, in those days, they, 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 they were very, very fruitful and eventful. They were useful. They did a lot of programs, you know, initiated, they, they exposed some person's consciousness to the, the, the 
the affairs of, of, of society. Mm -hmm. you no, know, in, in those days, some, some persons were, 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 were confined to to, to the prisons without going to the, the, the lay down the process for, to, to actually you know, take the, the proportion of the law. Yeah. So it, it has happened in the past. So for some of us who are still very, very conscious with, with the, what happened in those days, we we'll be able to reconcile it to the government we have today. Mm. What is happening under this regime? Okay. How effective the civil, uh, civil uh, 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 right activists, how, how effective have they been? Mm. In, 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 in checkmating the, the, the affairs of the, of, of the leadership of this country. Okay. So that will tell you that in those days, if you're able to reconcile that time mm. to, with, with this government, so you would be able to draw a correlation. Okay. Now, I, I left you some up there. Well, uh, one thing that seems to um, you know, be bothering people is the way uh, social rights activists become uh, politicians. Uh, you know, so one, there's that tendency to really want to doubt their intention. Take, for example, uh, Moyele Shawari, uh, who before now was known as a, a social rights activist. Uh, you know, within the twilight of the 2019 uh, presidential election, he became a presidential aspirant, and uh, he lost in that election. And of course, uh, he had to go uh, to that uh, uh, protest that was botched, the hashtag revolution now uh, protest. Now, how can we uh, begin to really uh, have confidence in this uh, whole thing? All right, <clears throat> first is to say, uh, quickly to respond to that. Social activists are citizens of the country. Yeah. Section 14 of the 1999 Constitution, subsection 1 and subsection 2, particulars in, in D part of it, C part of it, it says we have a right to participate in government. To participate in government is not just to be critics, it's to really be involved, to bring about those changes we want to see. Mm. Some persons think that, some persons as social activists believe that they can get into the system and bring about a change there. For some of us, we don't believe likewise. Mm. We just think that we should be here and moderate what happens there. And so for, uh, for Shouri, getting involved, mm. it's a right. It's, it's fundamental citizen and human rights too. Yeah, but, but don't you think there's, 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 there's a challenge in trying to differentiate between politics and social activism? They are different. That's what I said. It is, you, have to, um, you have to divorce one and marry the other. The other. Mm. You understand? But again, you can, if you, and act, activism is in the blood. So once you are an activist and you get into politics, it will still be seen that this person is an activist. Because the way you articulate, the way you will think, the way you want to implement, the way you want to react, will be different from the normal politician's way of doing things. I'll give you an example, Dino Milai. Till now, you, you people cannot differentiate between Dino Milai, an activist, or Dino Milai, a politician. Do you understand? Mm. So it is that if you play it wrongly, that's not bastardized what you do. But back to what I'm trying to say. Show what they have a right, has got the right to get involved in politics because mm. you want to bring about change. Mm. That is very true. Mm. But how it goes about it becomes another, another issue for questioning. Okay. So if it mingles with the wrong class of people, mm. of course, that will bastardize his identity. Mm. That's to the extent you see some persons are saying, some persons are saying, this guy, the way he went about <laughs> it, and you know, he messed it all up. They see him more as a politician. Yes, more of a politician than a trend or, 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 and, and a merchant activist. Yeah. Because we have some activists who are actually merchants. Mm. What they, they are not sincere and genuine about what they do mm. is how to make a living from it. So okay. Them, now, uh, uh, yeah, Comrade Mavis, uh, you want to say something? Yes, with respect to the issue we just, just uh, mm. talked about, yeah. show, a more early show, yeah. it's the comrade in the struggle. Mm. Of course, most of acknowledge that fact. He's a fellow comrade. He's a comrade of course, <laughs> he has paid his dues. Yeah. He has been the product of so many struggles. You know, but of course, being a comrade, he's expected that uh, before embarking on any struggle, there are, there are conditions, you know, there are seas you ought to actually exhaust first. You see, first one once said that each generation must discover its mission. Yeah. Either you fulfill it or betray it in relative world obscurity. So, if at his level, at his age, he is sitting at one's home, he's sitting home in his comfort uh, uh, in the, uh, abode, you know, looking at things happening to the detriment of the, common, the, the commoners, of course, he would have been uh, exposed to to, to some level of, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Mm. Uh, natural justice. Mm. But being a cop, I've been a comrade in struggle. He has been involved in so many struggles. It was expected of him.
to have first of all impact, impact on the consultation movement. You consult with diverse stakeholders, civil society groups, student body, all other relevant uh, 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 movements. You know, go from state to state for it, it, you know, organize uh, town hall meetings, you know, to interactive section with people, to know the, uh, the mind of people, what is actually good to their mind, how to actually ch chapter on such a course. And it, that he didn't do, mm. that aside. Then, I'm not trying to dispute the fact that the law, especially the you know, First Amendment to the Constitution, you know, protect five uh, basic freedoms, mm. which is freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom mm. of the press, civic freedom, rights. freedom of assembly, yeah. freedom to petition the government. Mm. So the, the, we, are, we, have, we have been empowered. Okay. We have been given that right. No, no, but no, no he, yeah. didn't, he didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah? This is so worrying. I'm not, trying to, I'm, I'm not against the fact that an activist should not be involved in politics. Mm. They're supposed to work together, you know, to, 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 to produce the, the, the needed results in the interest of the people. Now, he just con he contested other, a, a, political, a, a political platform, the party he established. Mm. He was the chairman of the party, at the same time, a presidential candidate of that party. He may not have the, the, the general election. Even when we were so, we felt so, we felt so bad and we were sad that the outcome of the, the, the results he got was actually not, not uh, encouraging. But we'll try to let that go. All right, gentlemen. Now, yeah. so, sorry, let yeah. me explain this. Yeah. Now, immediately after the election, he was alleged to have embezzled and misappropriated funds. It was expected of a leader. Anyway, yeah. we, we, step we, aside, we, we are really not discussing no, no, so right. Yeah, uh, but we, we're not as, as it relates to, yeah. to, 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 to civil rights yeah. activism, yeah. Yeah. he's like an activist. Yeah, uh, gentlemen, I must apologize because of time is really fast spent here today. Uh, comrade, I'll move there. I'll go. And uh, perhaps when we come, I'm going to ask you about uh, what happened. Uh, you know, the first at King Square, uh, you know, protesting uh, the non-independence of uh, power in Nigeria. We're, we're not talking about that now. Maybe we'll have time. And also, Mavis Iyamu, yeah, well, thank you so much. Because of thank time, because of time, because of time factor. Well, that's uh, the program today, this morning on ITV. And then one more time, we'll still say happy, happy independence, happy independence celebration. I yeah, that. no, there is independence, whether you like it or not. We must always shoot protest this. We are one day. All right, guys, that's the program this morning on ITV. Uyak Bomfogbe is going to be here tomorrow on the same program. My name is Evans Unuhuge. And goodbye, God bless you. This is ITV, certainly the best. Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria World Seas Ego Chapter at Do State in conjunction with the Kingdom Breakthrough Network, KBN, with all ministers of the gospel and church workers at all levels, presents Special Ministers Mega Conference 2019 Theme Understanding the Mark of the Beast Date Tuesday 15th to Thursday 17th October 2019 Time 10 a.m. prompt Registration is absolutely free Bishop Mon Ibnosa Chairman PFN Edo State Pastor Solomon O. Imaragbe State Vice Chairman Edo South District Apostle S.C. Edobo PFN World Coordinator Reverend Austin Favor Reverend G.O. Otaibe Reverend 
Reverend Andrew Elaho, Apostle Joshua Ogeva, Apostle Barrister GDN, Ebizube, Reverend Chris Ukwa, and Pastor D.E. Ibe Ministering, Pastor Eddie Ikiibe, Fenio, the Gallery Event Center, 10 TV Road, Olia Quarters, Benin City, Edo State. For inquiries, call 0803-791-1419 or 0803-551430. Jesus is Lord. See latest different original and high quality electrical appliances, generators, scintillating unisex wares, cosmetics, designers perfume, toiletries, foreign wines, food and beverages, refrigerators, air conditioners, washing machines, gas cookers, blenders, juice extractors, toasters and yam pounder. See powerful sunny sound system, home theaters, and other better brands like Sumer, Fireman, Hisense, Scar Frost, Skyrom, Pinaton, Green, and LG LED television sets. Baby, see chilled ice cream for oh mio mio logic plus ice block for that your party. Come design and print. SAV, large format banners, and others with high quality printing machines. Sharp, sharp, all for cheap, cheap money. Or struck market. Now you the rain now as you stand Gidiba for number one Akere Lane by Eden Oku Petrol Station for Ekoma. Number 111 Baba Road by Second Junction. Or number 57 Airport Road inside former Press Motel Complex Benin City. And Ostrock Plaza, number 6 NTA Road, Eke Kiye Nogwa by Yosa State. Green Green also for 090 813 41123. Ostrock Market. One stop market. Shop more at low prices. Mama bitchy o se ari deso Onisha market in Ekoma It don't land oh The thing where we find for Onisha, Lagos or Benin Don't get our donuts for Ekoma Mama bitchy go of tester material Don't bring Onisha from Ekoma Which kind of tester material you define? Now high target, big and small, Hollandis, Impress, Javiba Have been a high quality list, like Polish list Word list, mercury list, sequence list, fresh list. Now you define Mama Bitchy Home of Tester Material. Get all of them and plenty, plenty others for who for both sales and retail. If na quality judge of all types, e day, head tie of different grades, e day. I've been a earrings, necklace, wristwatches, and wedding rings with bags and shoes to match. Not a book on the chart or any other place they find as be material. Again, everything there, Mama Bitchy Home of Tester Material. We're there for number six, then Albert Street, for back of Mary the Queen Catholic Church for Echo. We're still there for number 11, Dover Street. By three junction for Echo. Mama Vitri Home of Tester Materials. This is not only check for Echo. Mama Vitri. Hello, Pastor Deborah Charles Osazuwa is my name. I want to specially invite you to this year's Hebrew Women International Conference with the team Step Up. Guest speakers for this conference this year are Reverend Abiola Omobude of the New Covenant Gospel Church, Reverend Dr. Margaret Agbonifo, Iye Mohia. Mama Ayo Orishe Jaffo, Word of Life Bible Church, Worry. Date and time for this year's conference is on the 9th through to 13th of October 2019. Time is 3 p.m. daily. There is a special session for pastors' wives, and the date is on the 12th on Saturday, 7 a.m. The topic is Help Me. The vessel that God is using for this special session for pastors' wives is Reverend Abiola Omobude at Rock of Ages Christian Assembly, kilometer 10 beneath Sapele Road, Obe Beneath City. God bless you. Visit number 69 Airport Road, Bidding City, at Doe State. You can also check us out on our website, www.biddingfilmacademy.com.ng or reach us on email, info at biddingfilmacademy.com.ng The Benin Film Academy, the gateway to the heart of Nollywood. This is ITV. Certainly the best.
Kids, Robert Kennedy is 72 years old and he's been a junior at T.L. Hanna High School since 1970. He's also a permanent member of the Yellow Jackets football team and the inspiration behind Cuba Gooding Jr.'s role in the movie Radio. Take a look. Meet Radio. He's a bit of a legend here in the small town of Anderson, South Carolina. At 72 years old, he's still in the 11th grade and he wouldn't have it any other way. Every year they take a group picture in the gym of all the seniors that's graduating that year. He will not get in that group. He said he knows he, he would have to leave. Not only is Radio a student at T.L. Hanna High School, he's perhaps the most revered member of its football team, the Yellow Jackets, even though he's never played a second of football. I think it was just God's plan that put radio right down there on that practice field. It was 1964 in the heat of August when JV coaches Harold Jones and Dennis Patterson noticed a young man coming to the practices every day holding a transistor radio to his ear. He started mimicking us coaches and the players. And so we was trying to get him to come closer to us. We wanted him to get involved. So we said, well, let's, let's get off him a, a Coke, maybe, and a hamburger. And maybe we can get him to. And that was the trick. They learned he was 18-year-old James Robert Kennedy, nicknamed Radio because of his obsession with radios. In today's terms, he was born with an intellectual disability and was unable to learn how to read or write and could barely speak. But the coaches and players saw past that and soon made him one of their own. He wanted to be like the coaches and all. I was a defensive coach, so I'd give the sign, you know, and he'd do the same thing. And then every once in a while, if I, you know, got mad at an official, you know, he'd get mad at an official. Radio would become a permanent member of the team, going to practices, giving pep talks, and leading them onto the field before games. Radio really loved those guys out there, you and the, and the coaches. He do wind sprints, and you know they they loved it. He just grew a part of them. He came from a rough neighborhood across town, and lived with his mom, stepdad, and younger brother, who was also intellectually disabled. Radio loved going into town, perhaps to escape the ridicule and bullying from kids in his own neighborhood. His mother, you know, she'd worked two jobs. She worked in the hospital, and then she did housework. And her biggest concern was these two boys, you know, keep them out of the institution. Well, I told her, we'll take care of radio while he's at the school and everything. Don't worry about it. So in 1970, the coaches arranged for the 24-year-old to enroll in Hannah High School as a junior. Radio was ecstatic. I think that saved his life, being able to be out here at Hannah. He was learning all the time. But the community at Hannah High School would soon realize that what they got from radio was more than what they were doing for him. He loves to give hugs. I mean, if you're having a bad day, he can really raise you back up, you know? He's just part of our family. Like you say, I think the good Lord caused all that. This wasn't the first time Coach Jones reached out to someone who needed friendship. I had a, something in my heart for people like that. It was a kid about my age who lived across the street from him. A lot of people would pick on him, so I kind of defended him, you know, and he was my friend. I just think it was the right thing to do. In 1996, Sports Illustrated writer Gary Smith penned an article about the friendship between Coach Jones and radio. From there, Hollywood director Michael Tolan brought their story to the silver screen in the movie Radio. When I'm answering an email, I always put down, you know, if it's a student, I say, well, please find a student that has special need in your school and become their friend. Individuals got a special need. You know, they're just like you and I. They should be treated with respect and everything like we want to be respected. When Coach Jones retired in 1999, his biggest concern was whether his successor, Terry Honeycutt, and others would take care of his dear friend. He didn't have to worry long. They stepped up to the plate, each one. They love him. They want to be part of him, you know? They just, 
I mean, radio's a radio. Man, he's a man. One nation. Today, that friendship continues, and at Hannah High School, you will still find that same 11th grader greeting everyone with a smile and a hug and cheering on his beloved Yellow Jackets. From radio, a young man who couldn't learn how to read, write, or even play a sport comes a lesson we all need to remember. People with special needs, you know, they, they give us more love than we can actually return. Boy, that's the truth, you know. And yeah. usually, um, people with special needs are, are very even in their mm -hmm. temperament, and so they do bring a joy and they bring just a wonderful atmosphere yeah. to the people that they're in touch with. Well, that's so nice. Yeah, it's wonderful. a beautiful thing. All right. Time for some email let's, questions. Let's are you go ready? for it. All right. Okay. This is a viewer, Pat, who says, "Jesus says in Luke nine that to be a true follower, you have to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Him." What does this look like for people today who shoulder all the demands of life, school, job, family, bills, etc.? Um, the term would be to take up your electric chair and follow me, which means you're subject to death. It means that you're alive, but at the same time, you're willing to die, that the old you, the selfish you, uh, the uh, person that's looking always to build up your own ego, that that person is crucified, that's dead. Take up your cross and follow me. That means that you're subject to death. And you live, the spiritual part of you lives, but the old man is dead. And that's what the Bible talks about, the flesh, the sarks, the old man is put to death, and the new man is alive in God. That's what that means. All right. Okay, this is Jennifer who says, Pat, I understand that you've had cancer. I recently had surgery to remove cancer. I'd like to know what you did for treatment, if anything. Well, it was amazing. I, uh, my friend Bill Horan ran into uh, a guy on a plane who'd had a special uh, uh, work with a, a man down in Florida. And the uh, other way of treating that, I had a prostate cancer, and it was, you know, Gleason 7 and all that stuff. And uh, what they, they, they offer, they can give you seed, they can give you radiation, they can give you all these treatments. And some of them work, but uh, some of them don't. So I said, just get that thing out of me. And I, I ran into a doctor, he's an Israeli, who had uh, pioneered a treatment uh, that involved uh, uh, orthoscopic uh, invasion of your uh, body and he cuts that thing out, takes it out through your navel, and and uh, that's what happens. And and the you know they sew it all up arthroscopically. Wow. And uh, I think, as I recall, I was riding a horse about a week afterwards. Yeah, I do recall that. <laughs> but it, it was instead of a terrible um, thing. That's what I had. And uh, I don't know what you what kind of cancer you've got, but. My, my, my wife had breast cancer, and she had a mastectomy. I just think if you've got one of those things, uh, you can play with it if you want to, but, you know, it's better sometimes to just get rid of it. And that's what I did, and that was years ago, and I'm still going on. All right. This is Cammie, who says, When the Ten Commandments were given to Moses, do you believe that these were only applicable to the Israelites and subsequently to Christians or to all people? A friend of mine believes we should not be offended by and confront a non-Christian who uses profanity around us with regularity since they do not have any reason not to use this language and God does not need defending. Well, there's a certain truth in that. You know, you shall not take the name of Jehovah, your God, for blasphemy. And, you know, the, the Orthodox, some of the Orthodox say G blank D, mm -hmm. like they somehow are keeping the commandment. That's nonsense. I mean, it's just absurd. What God is saying, the name of God is, is Yahweh or Jehovah, and you don't use that for vanity because he is, the name means he who causes everything to be. And, but I think the Ten Commandments, and I, I did a whole series on the Ten Commandments of how they were essentially made to protect people. You know, they, you're protected in your family, you're protected in your reputation, you're protected in your property, and, uh, you know, from slander and, and uh, immorality and so forth. 
and the, the, they apply across the board. They're, they're very good because they make an awful lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And so what are they for? They're general principles. If you understand what they are, that will help you in the way you live, and they will make your community a whole lot better. So are they good for everybody? Yes, but uh, the Lord Jesus is a fulfillment of the law. We're not subject to the dietary laws. We're not subject to all those rules and regulations. By grace are you saved through faith and not, not of yourself. It's a gift of God. That, that's what we, we live in the time of grace. All right. And this is Michael who says, do you think that we each will retain our masculine and feminine characteristics through eternity 